Welcome! Well, we're here to look at some brand new Arduino related toys, so let's get started. Here we're dealing with the AT Teeny 85 microcontroller. You can uh, set this up on Arduino compiler, at least one type of them, with some modifications, and you can use most of Arduino's commands to do everything an Arduino does. Um, the actual device is this little circuit board back here. It has been connected through an I2C interface to an MCP2016. That's a GPIO expander. has 16 I.O. pins on it. And here I'm just counting in binary on a strip of LEDs, if you can see them up there a bit. And it's starting over again. I just have it blinking the LED. I'm going to discuss some programming options, how to set this up, and so forth. If you really want to know what the size of this is, there it is next to a quarter. It's that small. The price, under $2 off of eBay has 6k of RAM and a lot of what I'm going to be discussing in this next series of videos on PIC, PICX and these Arduino chips is how to program how to take a program from 8, 6, 700 bytes and write the same program with a hundred bytes or less. In fact I got it down in one case to blinking an LED with 58 bytes. So, anyway, uh, let's continue on and we'll look at some more. A closer look at the DigiSpark ATTini85. You have a um, USB port for programming and it can also supply power if you want to use it for a power source. It has three power pins, voltage in, ground, and 5 volts. has an onboard 5 volt regulator. It also has six I.O. pins. Most can be programmed as pulse width modulation, digital, analog to digital, conversion, and so forth. P5, I think, is only an input and it's a reset. Uh, you can also program this to do I2C for accessing real-time clocks, I pit digital I.O. expanders, and so forth. Here's a closer look at the device. Um, 5 volt regulator. This is your actual AT Teeny 85. Here's your output connectors and so forth. Here's a schematic to the board. Here's your onboard regulator. There's your power input. You have a power LED. You have an indicator LED that's connected to PB1. The only um, port in this particular chip, chip that you have is port B and like my other earlier lectures on uh, accessing Arduino ports you can do the same thing here. You have ports B, PB0 through PB5. Over here is your USB micro input. Note that most of the time uh, if you leave the computer interface and you lose use of PB3 and PB2. In other words, you'll have to unplug the cable to be able to use them. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we should know here? Here is, let's blow this up so we can see it a little more. I don't know how well this is going to look. This is going to, that's digital and analog. Um, this tells you what these do PB0, P0 and P2 are your I2C interface and so forth. To program the DigiSpark device, I'm using what is called Arduino Nightly. This is an ongoing development that's rather flexible and does a real good job. 
couple things you have to do to set this up. You have to download and drop in here. Let's see if we can find it real quick. All right, where are you? Okay, you'll have to download, um, unzip, and drop in this little library, Teeny Wire M, if you want to use the I2C. Let's go ahead and start up the Arduino. Come on up, baby. All right, here we are. To set this up to be used, you'll have to uh, do a couple of things to modify this to use the DigiSpark devices. You're gonna come down here to Preferences. You'll see this, uh, you can read this online on how to set it up. You put this line in here, digistump.com slash package digistump underscore index dot j s o n and so forth then you're going to go over here to tools boards you're going to go to what is called board manager you'll come down here to contributed and there it is it's already installed if it's not you would click on, and you have to be tied into the internet. You have to be tied into the internet to use this normally. That is strange when you get down to it, but you have to be tied into an internet, and uh, if it's not already downloaded, it tries to download information when you bring up Arduino nightly. Nonetheless, it's already in here, it seems. So we're gonna get rid of that. All right, let's go with the the first AT Teeny program that I did. This is it. If you saw my um, Arduino videos on ports, I decided to go ahead and use the exact same port B programming that I did in a full size Arduino. Okay, this device, if you want to compile it and all that stuff, let it compile. All right, it's compiled. It's a total of 404 bytes. Um, if you look down here, there's only 6,012 bytes of uh, flash RAM available. Uh, something like about, this program is about 50, 60, it's about 100 bytes. It's 300 if it's just an empty loop and an empty setup. But the total program by using this is 102 bytes, and what I'm doing is blinking the LED that's on PB1. All right. Here is, if you were looking at the, um, this is normal when you see that down there. It'll tell you it's an invalid library. Ignore it. It'll work. Okay. In the case you saw in the video, I had connected an MCP23016. It's at address 20. It hooks up. Uh, you have to include the, to use I2C, you have to include this library, teenywire m.h. Okay. Before you spend hours tearing your hair out, I, it took me over an hour to finally get it correct. You have to use an an unsigned integer 8. This is the type integer you have to use. If you just use a regular integer or a byte, the compiler keeps crashing. Will not work. All right. All right. Basically, uh, Teeny, this looks pretty much like you've had before when you used I2C. Uh, send and receive and so forth with Arduino. Not a, no real difference. 
as far as that goes. Now this is an important thing that I've done here for you to realize. I have all this stuff. Remember I only have one port here, port B. I'm using two of the port B pins, that's PB0 and PB2 for my I2C. But at the same time, I'm blinking an LED off and on, off and on, off and on with the uh, I2C port running. Because if you look at this here, that's PB0, PB1, PB2, and it's only good up to about PB5. There is no 6 and 7, doesn't exist. And by the way, it has its own internal oscillator, so you're not dealing with crystals. But that's how, when you sit here, I'm using the data direction register, and I set the bit with an OR to make uh, PB0 an output. By doing it with an OR statement, I don't interfere with PB0 and PB2 and mess up uh, my I2C. The same thing down here. This is what's actually blinking the uh, LED that you saw is I'm doing an exclusive OR with bit 1. Only bit 1 is being exclusive OR on port B. So that's the only thing every cycle it goes through while it's counting 0 to 255 it's going to toggle the LED on and off. That's your total program. And so I'll put that up on the website and everything. This is just give you an idea of what you can do with the ATTNE85. The DigiSpark version has its own USB and how you program this uh, you simply uh, upload uh, it'll ask you to plug in you plug in the device after it tells you to do it you don't leave it plugged in and it'll program it for you okay so that completes our little introduction to the ATT 85 by Digispark uh, I'll include the uh, I'll include a copy of the drivers and literature and stuff on my web page on the site. Uh, thanks for viewing and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.